Welcome to Entity Framework Core Fundamentals plus Blazor Part 2. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get updates on our new videos. Before we continue, let's talk about the things that you will need for this tutorial. First, you need to have a machine that has Windows 11, whether it be a PC or a laptop. Windows 10 is also fine. Next, you need to download Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. So, you just need to head out to this website, visualstudio.com, uh, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs. And yeah, it will uh, give you this page. This page might probably have changed by the time this uh, video came out. So, yeah. But I've, I, I think it, it does not, uh, it won't be hard uh, looking for the download uh, link. link. So here you have select, select download and then just click on community and then it will download an installer and from there you can uh, install this IDE. So this will be the IDE that we will be using for the rest of this series. And then the next one is DB browser for SQLite. So you also need to download and install this on your machine. So head out to sqlitebrowser.org. And then go to the download page and then uh, just download this first one in standard, standard installer and install this on your machine. So this application is a SQLite uh, client. So it allows you to connect to your SQLite database and uh, allows you to perform different tasks like uh, viewing the tables and the data and whatever uh, database uh, activities that you want to do with your SQLite database. Open Visual Studio and search for Blazor Server App Template. If it's not visible in the list of tem templates, just add on to the search bar and type Blazor Server and it should come up on the list. Select it and then click Next and then uh, type the project name. So let's type uh, EF Core Fundamentals. Then, yeah, solution name, just leave it as that one. And then click next. And then, yeah, for the framework version, yeah, six would be fine. No authentication type. Yeah, configure for HTTPS and then do not use top level statements. And then just click create. So, Visual Studio will uh, prepare your project with the necessary files that it needs. And so it should come up shortly. And now we have our uh, Blazor project generated. And so for this one, we will be uh, cleaning this up, remove unnecessary files. And so to do that, Let's remove those things that we don't need. So, for example, this counter the tracer. So, this is part of the uh, sample files that is generated along with this entire project template. Uh, this one, fetch data that tracer, delete this also. And also, with data, let's remove these files also. These are uh, services, we won't be needing them. Putting here, survey prompt, delete that also. And then let's make some changes to our menu. Let's remove unnecessary links here. These ones, counter fetch data. Okay, let's save it. And what else? Ah, index one also. Let's remove this since we have already de deleted this component. Right, I think that's pretty much what we all need to do. And so let's try running this app just to make sure that it builds and it runs uh, as expected. So we have an error, let's click no, data, let's check here. Okay, so we also need to remove this line since we've deleted the uh, corresponding file for that, a service. And let's, let's try running again. We have still another error. 
set it to error namespace okay let's double click on this one what would be the missing piece data let's try rebuilding build solution build failed data test name ah yes i get this now okay this using line here we should also remove that one don't need that and then let's try running again hopefully this time it uh, would build and run okay and now since we have our console here running it should pull up our uh, default page once this uh, console completes okay now we have our browser and it now runs the default page okay so now we are presented with the index page which has the text hello world welcome to our new app okay so that seems to be working fine and so let's move on to the next step let's add a folder named models so right click on our project and then select add and then new folder let's type in models so this folder uh, all of our entity classes will be placed here okay so next let's add a product a class so this class or entity class will hold the data for our products so again right click on the models folder select add and then class then let's name this product now we will add uh, several properties first one would be an id so an entity needs to have an id okay or an enti entity class needs to have an id and then basic name and then uh, let's add a price of type decimal and then price okay so this would now be the composition of our class product we will create a new context class so let's right click on our data folder right click and then select add and then select class and then let's name this as online store context okay and then for this class we will be inheriting from db context okay so db context is a ef core class that uh, would now act as sort of a, like a glue that would uh, connect us to our our connect our classes to our database okay so this will be now sort of like our middleman so everything that you would do with ef core you would do via this db context class okay next let's add a uh, property a, a db set property DB set of type product so the product or the uh, entity class that we just created and then let's name this products okay now this will give us access to our uh, to the data of our products okay and then next we will configure uh, the connection so that it would allow us to connect to our SQLite database so to do that we will need to override the on configuring method okay so within this method we will set the connection and then first we will need to use SQLite and then we will pass in the connection string so it will be just a simple setting of the data source let's name this online store.db and that's it so that's the most basic configuration of our a DB context. Next, let's add another NuGet package so we can use migrations. So migrations is a way for us to make changes to our database. So again, let's right click on our project and then select manage NuGet packages. And here we will be searching for entity framework core again. And then what are we going to look for is package named 
microsoft.entityframeworkcore.tools so this will be the package that we will use so we can start using migration so migration is a way for us to uh, make changes to our database so now that we have this selected let's just click install then wait for it to be installed on our project let's, let's just click ok then i accept and hopefully it gets installed then once this is done we should now be able to proceed to our next step let's create our first migration let's close this nuget package manager and then let's open package manager console so if it's not present uh, in your window you can go to view other windows and select package manager console and then it should open up within your uh, ide okay so now here we will start adding our first migration by typing add dash migration so this will be the command that you will use when you want to create a migration okay and then let's type in the name of the migration so let's just say initial and when you hit enter it will generate the migration for you okay so once it's uh, starting up it will compile your application or your code and then from there it will uh, generate the necessary migration for you okay so you may have noticed that a new f window has appeared so this is named this one so let's just minimize this for a moment and you can see that this is uh, the generated migration okay so it, you can see, all, see also in our solution explorer there is another folder that has been added it's called migrations and then this will be the contents of it so we have the initial migration that has been created so it has like a timestamp and then underscore the name that we uh, use so in this case initial okay and there's also another file that has been generated named online store context model snapshot so if you open this one you will see that uh, it has also uh, contents of some sort of mapping okay so we don't need to be worrying about this for now since this is auto generated okay so we will try to focus our attention here so this uh, you can see that uh, there's two main methods for this migration file so the first one is up and then the other one is down so whatever is inside this app up method it will be used to generate or update your uh, database now the down method within this one is some sort of like a, re a revert okay or it will uh, revert back to the previous state of your database or the, the previous uh, uh, setup of your database okay so in this case it will drop the table so in the up method you have here a create table so from this migration builder uh, object we will create a table and then uh, it will generate the necessary uh, table uh, uh, column names including its con constraints like the primary key we will talk about all of these things later as we go on with our session just uh, remember that uh, this migration file contains all of the necessary code that we you will be used when uh, we will be updating our database with the actual uh, code or with the actual configuration for our database okay so now next step is actually uh, making changes to our database so that means we will need to update our database now to do that let's open up again our package manager console and then we will do another command this time we will use update dash database that's it no other uh, parameters and then just hit enter okay again it will go through the process of generating the database for you okay 
Now, looking at the Solution Explorer, you might have noticed that there's another file that has been created. It is named onlinestore.tb. So this now is our actual database, our actual SQLite database. You also notice that if we head back to our context file or configuration, we named it here as onlinestore.tb. Okay. So now our database has been created, including uh, our tables within it. Okay. Now, how do we uh, verify or check if the database is actually created? Now we can open this database file. So we just head to our project, then right click that one, and then let's open file, open folder in File Explorer. Okay. And then here. This is the contents of our project, right? And then we have here our online store.db. Now, we can inspect the contents of this database by using uh, the another app, uh, the DB Explorer, okay? Or DB Browser, okay? Let's open our DB Browser application. Okay, we have it here open. And then... We can easily open our database by dragging this database file into this window, okay? And then after you drag and drop it here, you will see that it has several uh, information about your database, including the tables that it has within it, okay? So it has, uh, EF course generated actually several databases, I mean several tables. So the first one is this products, since this is the uh, the one from our migration. This will hold the data for our products. And then another one is also this EF migration history. So this one is be, being used by EF Core to track our migrations. Okay. And then this other one, SQLite se sequence, is another table that uh, stores the different uh, setting for our uh, sequence uh, column type. Okay, so now we can actually go to this tab, Browse Data, and then you can see that you can actually view the contents of your table. In this case, we can select Products, and then yeah, since we have not yet added data to it, then it will be just an empty uh, table. Okay, let's modify our Products page to show a list of products. So within this Add Code section, Let's add our code so that we can display our products. So first, let's create a variable of a type list of products. Let's name it underscore products. A new list of product type. Okay. So let's pull in our namespace for this one. So this variable will hold our data for our products that we will show later on in a table okay next in our on initialized uh, method we will initialized we will add our code to actually pull the data from our database okay so start with using our context is equal to new online online store context okay so let's pull in the required namespace for this one. So this online store context is the class that we just created previously that inherits from DB context. And now within this uh, using block, we will pull our data by doing context.products.toList. Okay. So which means that it will query all of the data for our products and store it in this list of products variable okay next is let's add a table to actually show our products so go up here let's add a section here for table let's add some bootstrap classes ordered then let's set up our headers. Let's add a name. 
and then a price okay simple as that next in our body within our body we will do a for loop that would uh, display the contents of our products in each row okay so let's do a for each product in our from our our products list variable then here we will add a table row oops sorry and then a cell that has product that name and then the other one would be at product dot price okay okay now that we have that let's just try running this and see if uh what would it, what it would look like okay. let's run our application hopefully it should come up anytime now right our browser should come up now in a sec we already have our console here running Then we have our browser. Great. So now we have our app loaded. So let's just navigate to our products page. Products. Okay. Now when this product is, uh, when you navigate to this page, it will run the code within your on initialized method. And then it will pull the products from here. Okay. And then. It will show it within this table but since we have not yet added data to it uh, it will just come up as empty okay so this seems to be fine so let's add a navigation link to this in our navigation menu so that we, we can navigate to it easier so let's open our nav menu component and then let's add another navigation link here so let's add here let's see let's see that one let's name this products then let's set the href to slash products then let's save this one hopefully this should work let's check back to our browser And see let's try refreshing okay now we have our products link okay so let's just let's try navigating back to our home page and then let's click on products then we are uh, navigated back to the products page okay now this seems to be working fine for now so let's go back to our products page since we don't have any data yet let's add a new blazor component where we can add a product so in our pages folder let's right click and then let's add first let's add a folder that will store our any product related uh, components so let's name this products and then inside this products folder it's let's right click and then select add and then select razor component and then we will name this as create product okay let's click add okay now that we have our uh, create product page let's start building this up so first off let's set the uh, url for this one or the route so we will specify at page slash products slash create okay so we can navigate to this uh, component or page whenever we want to create a new product okay next up is inside our code uh, we will need to store or store a new product okay so let's create a variable here let's name this underscore product is equal to a new product okay so let's call in its namespace first 
let's add a reference to our models great now that we have that let's create our form okay so first up is let's create a div here and then inside that we will add our uh, product form okay so let's just set as this one then let's add a label the name and then input let's type text and class form control since we are already using a bootstrap and then another property that we will add is bind so this one is what you call uh, property binding for our name property of our new product okay so we have that one let's add the rest of the other fields let's just copy this one paste and then set this as price then bind this to the product property then this one uh, I think that's all good for now let's add a save button okay so let's remove this let's add a button type button then let's just name it a save and then let's add some class button button primary again we're using bootstrap here and then we will uh, set the uh, event binding for this one so when the button is clicked we will call the save function okay great so you have noticed that there's a red squiggly line under it so it means that our uh, save method is not yet created or not present so let's create that one so here inside our code section let's create our save method so to save now we will be using the instance of our online store context so to do that we will be using a using statement var context is equal to new online store context okay now let's call in the namespace for this just press uh, control dot and then it should give you an option to add the using statement for our context which is inside EF core fundamentals that data okay cool next we will add the actual code that would save our product so we have access to our context then we have also access to our products and then let's just use the add method to add our product okay next to actually save the product we will need to call context that save changes okay and so after that let's exit out of this page and navigate ourselves back to the products page so to do that we will first need to have an access to our uh, navigation or navigation manager so let's inject our navigation manager navigation manager then let's name it navigation and then here after we have saved our product let's redirect back to or navigate back to our products page so here we can call navigation dot navigate to okay products page okay great so i think we have set up most of our uh, create product page so let's try uh, running this one okay so let's run our application let's wait for it to build and compile hopefully it shouldn't take long okay now we have our console here running and our application should come up now in our browser okay 
so now we have our browser here let's navigate to our products page okay so uh, something's missing here uh, we should or we need to add a link to the create product page okay so to do that in our products page let's add a navigation link okay so here let's go back to products page and then here below it let's add just add a div okay and then we will be using the nav link uh, component nav link right let's just set the uh, class for this one and then let's set the href that would set the navigation for this uh, link so we will navigate to products slash create okay let's add some uh, bit of a margin here okay cool let's save this one and let's see our page Let's try okay oh we forgot to add the name of the button or the label of the button name it create okay let's head back again to our page products page okay now we have our button here so if we click this one it should navigate us to our create product page now here we can now start uh, adding a product okay so for example like let's name t-shirt one Let's price it at twelve twenty-five. Then once we click the save button, it should save the product and then navigate us back to the products page. Okay, let's click save. And then as you can see, we are navigated back to our products page. And then, yep, the t-shirt one, our product we just added has been part of or listed here in our products table. Okay. So if we refresh this one, you should still see the product that we just added. Okay. So that way, or what we just did is how we can save our product. Okay. Heading back to our products page and then the actual logic for this one. I think we're missing something in the create product page. Let's let's add a cancel button. Okay. So it's just like the same as the one on the products page so basically we can just uh, copy this one from this one let's just uh, have here our nav mino already here you can just uh, it's nav link it's product yeah we can just copy and paste this one okay then Add it here but instead we will remove the icons and we'll just name this as cancel then remove this one then set the class as button button dash primary is that it oh let's call it secondary so we don't get confused with the other save button so if we save that one and head back to our create page, so we now have a uh, uh, option to cancel out of this uh, create product page. Okay, so if we just click cancel, then it allows us to navigate back to the product page.